Trust that you can hear from God. Welcome to Live With Passion. I'm Father Cedric Pizania. I am producing a series about trust, and this has to do with trusting in your prayer life that you can hear from God. This is Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God. God is a refuge for us. One of the greatest acts of trust that we can do is prayer. In prayer, we're trusting that God somehow is there, that he hears us, and hopefully he will answer us. Jesus was a person of prayer. He was a person of trust. He trusted God all the time. And this series is about trusting God in many different ways. And I want you to trust God in your prayer life, that God is there for you, and that when you speak to God and when you listen to God, you can hear from God, and God will hear you. Jesus was a person of prayer. Of course, he prayed before making decisions, before choosing his apostles. He trusted that God would help him. Then he prayed before being anointed by the Holy Spirit. Then he prayed before encountering God in his transformation at the transfiguration. Then he prayed when he suffered in Gethsemane. He prayed on the cross and he redeemed the world through his trust that God was hearing his prayer and answering his prayer. Prayer is an act of trust. At its most basic level, at its foundation, it's simply coming before God in trust believing that God is there, he hears you, and that God will answer you, hopefully, and believing that you can hear from God. I expressly want to underline that, that you can hear from God. People struggle in their prayer life. There's distractions, there's temptations, there's laziness. They struggle with what they're gonna say, does God hear me? No answers. Well, one of the ways that you can hear from God, and it's worked in my life, and I want to share it with you, that's the scriptures, the Bible. People say, well, I read the Bible, but I don't know where to go, and I don't seem to get much out of it. I don't know if it's for me. Maybe it's for scholars. Well, let me tell you this. When I was 18 years old, no Bible scholar, I just simply came to the scriptures, came to where Jesus speaks. It was all in red. It was Matthew 7, 7. For the first time in my life, I heard God speak to me. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it will be open to you. Seek and you will find. I thought God was speaking right to me about my prayer life. And what I was hearing was, Cedric, you're not really praying. <laughs> Spend some time in prayer and see what happens. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and a door will be open for you. Seek and you will find. The Bible is a collection of books written many different times, many different communities, all compiled together. Another word for Bible is the word scripture. Scripture simply means sacred writings. It's a living word. God breathed. Inspired means God breathed. It addresses situations that we're going through. Fear, doubts, emotional pain, relationships. You name it, the Bible talks about it. The Catholic Church has gone through a revolution when it comes to scripture. There has been Bible study groups springing up everywhere. Scholarship has increased dramatically. And we are told in the seminary, when it comes to preaching, preaching homilies, sermons, that they should emerge from the word. In the past, I think it was more catechetical. They were talking about sacraments and the commandments and the catechism. Those were all good things. Now, especially the homily should emerge from the scriptures, from the word. Personally, been born again 
through the word of God. That's what 1 Peter 1.23 says that we are born again through the living, through the living and abiding word of God. The scriptures, the message, the wonderful communication of God to us through the scriptures actually brings something new in us. I go like this because it transforms our hearts. Call it being born again, reborn, transformed, inspired, whatever you want to call it. There's something good that happens when you come to the scriptures. For me personally, it inspires me, guides me, encourages me, challenges me, comforts me, gives me hope. It's a living hope. It's truth. And there are precious promises in the word. And God is a promise keeper. When you read those promises and you hold on to them, you know that they're true. For example, if God is for us, who can be against? We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. These are promises. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nothing is impossible for God. There's encouragement. Talks about trust. In today's scripture, trust God at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts before him. Talks about trusting God in prayer. Vatican II, which was this great gathering of bishops from around the world, the Pope, the Cardinals, 60 years ago in Rome. Vatican II taught us to read the Bible. In fact, one of the constitutions, that's the highest teaching of the church, a constitution of Vatican II, was called De Verbum, the Word of God. And it had to do with the scriptures. And it said that we can come to know Jesus in a personal way by frequent reading of the divine scriptures. That's so powerful because Jesus literally, his fragrance comes to us through the scriptures. Right after we proclaim the gospel, priests or deacons, we bend over and we kiss. We kiss the book. We kiss the Bible. Why is that? Because we reverence what's in there but because Jesus comes to us through the scriptures. Jesus is present in the sacraments, present in the Bible, present in the community, and we reverence that. The Bible literally, Christ is alive through the scriptures. We are fed at the table of the altar with communion, and we're fed at this table, the table of God's word. The Catholic Church, for those of you who are not Catholic, The Catholic Church is a Bible-believing church. In fact, this may be news to you, the Bible emerged from the church. The church didn't emerge from the Bible. It was the early Christian community, and we trace our Catholic roots all the way back to the apostles, that wrote the scriptures, of course, being inspired by God. So the Bible came from the community. And then the community continued to grow. The community did not come from the Bible. We are a Bible-believing church. At every Mass, we have the scriptures proclaimed, not novels, not poetry, not fiction, the scriptures. And it will always be that way. And not just one reading. On Sunday, we have four readings from the Bible. The Psalm, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Gospel. During weekday liturgies, three readings from the Bible. Fifteen years ago, there was a synod on the Word of God in the Catholic Church. Bishops met from around the world, and it was all about the Word of God. It lasted some three weeks, and they talked about how can we get people to read the Bible in the church. Well, one of the cardinals got up and addressed the synod, and he said that the Bible is God's love letter addressed to us personally. And that is so good. Everybody clapped when he said that. Think about the scriptures that way, that it's not just for everybody else, it's for you. 
God is trying to communicate with you. I found that out as a young boy when I was 18 and the scripture spoke to me and multitudes of time after that, how God speaks to me through the word. Now I'm not up on a glory cloud somewhere. I'm just like you. Sometimes it doesn't make sense and I don't know exactly what God's saying, but I'm going to help you with that in a minute. But a lot of times it's transformative. Like I said, we're born again through the living and abiding word of God. And I want you to trust to trust that you can hear. It's for you as much as for anybody else. Pope Francis said something interesting about the scriptures. He said, you should consult your Bible as much as you do your iPhone. He said that people should carry the Bible with them as they do their iPhone. That's how dedicated we are to the scriptures, we being the Catholic Church. We are a Bible-believing church, or I wouldn't belong to it. So many tell me, Father, I'm struggling getting anything out of the Bible. How do you do it? I want to explain to you an ancient practice of the Catholic Church called Letio Divina. Letio Divina came from the third century. Letio Divina means Letio, the word Divina, the divine word. It simply means reading the word. First of all, Letio, in order to get something out of the scriptures, first of all, let's get real basic here. You got, you got to come to the scripture. Oftentimes people have it on their bookshelf. They don't read it at all. Just spend a little time reading it. That's the first step. You've got to come to the Bible, read a little bit about it. Especially if you're a Catholic and you go to Mass, try reading the daily Mass readings, whatever it is, the Sunday Mass readings. There are helps to this. There are booklets called The Word Among Us, Give Us This Day, Magnificat, that have each day broken down into the scripture readings, making it really simple. Because sometimes the Bible itself can be very intimidating for people. Where do I begin? What do all these numbers mean? How do you make sense of this? You get a magazine like that, The Word Among Us, Give Us This Day, Magnificat, doesn't cost all that much for a subscription, and simply read. Watch what happens. Read the Mass readings or the New Testament. People don't normally know where to begin. You don't want to start way back at the beginning because then you get into the genealogies and you're not going to be all that inspired with it. Stick with the New Testament at first, and then you can explore the Psalms and Proverbs and different things like that. But basically, I would say the Mass readings, and if you're not Catholic, go to the Gospels, go to the letters of Paul, go to the Psalms, go to the Proverbs. Explore, and don't spend a long time. Otherwise, you're not going to go to it the next day. Just five minutes, ten minutes, a little bit of time. Give yourself to it. Watch what happens. This is Letio Divina. You simply read and you concentrate on the word. And let me tell you something very quickly. People say, okay, I read the scriptures, Father Cedric, but I still don't feel like I'm getting anything out of it. It's just I read it and it does nothing happens. Well, here's what you got to do. When I have to preach a homily or a sermon before 500 or 1,000 people, I can be the same as you. I can just kind of read it and it just goes by. But when I have to preach a sermon, I read it slowly. I focus on it, I concentrate on it, because what am I going to say to all these people? And it's amazing how if you have to preach a homily, say you have to preach a homily to 500 people on a scripture reading, if you had to do it, it's amazing what you're going to get out of it, because you will slow down enough to look and to focus and to concentrate, because you know that you have to get up there in front of all those people and say something about it. So pretend that you're going to preach. Slow down and focus. Concentrate. Just don't read it. Slow down a little bit. Begins with Letio Divina. Simply reading the scriptures in a focused, concentrated way. Five, ten minutes. That's all it takes. And then the next part of Letio Divina, this ancient practice, something called Meditatio. 
Meditatio is just what you think it is. Meditating. It says in the Bible that Mary treasured all these things in her heart. She reflected about life. Same with us. We need to reflect about life and about the scriptures. That means take a few moments after you read and just get quiet. It doesn't have to be five or ten minutes, just 30 seconds. Take a deep breath and let it out and say, what, what is this saying to me? Pause. Take a moment. You'll notice that my producer and I have been doing something in our episodes. They're called pauses. After I speak for a little while, we'll stop. You'll hear some music playing. You'll see some images to help you to reflect upon what I've just said. They're called pauses. And I got that idea from the Bible itself. In the Bible, as I was reading the Psalms, it would stop for a moment and there was a word called sila. The word means pause and think about that. The Bible itself is telling us to meditate, pause, think about what you just read. And that's what we're trying to do in these programs, these episodes, trying to help you to pause for a moment to think about what I'm preaching. Same with the scriptures. You just take a little bit of time, you pause, and you think about it. Great example, Psalm 62, 8. I began the episode with that. Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God, for God is our refuge. Then after that, it says, Selah. It's a built-in pause. And it wants us to think, it being the Bible, the writer of the scriptures, the psalmist, wants us to think about, in our prayer life, trusting in God. What is he saying? He's saying that as you pray, trust that God is there, trust that he hears you, trust that you can hear from him. Pour out your hearts. Tell God what you're thinking. God is a refuge. God is our stronghold. God is our rock. God is unshakable. Those are just a few thoughts. But my main point is pause. And it says, in good times and in bad, at all times, O people. There are times, there are seasons in our life where we're going through good times and everything's going great. And there are seasons in our life that we are struggling and suffering. At all times, trust God, it's saying. This is what I mean about pausing. You think about what you just read instead of just reading it and going on to the next thing. The scriptures are rich. They're pregnant with ideas. They can help you. You can hear from God if you focus and concentrate. Remember, act as if you're about to preach in front of a lot of people. Sometime back, I was preaching at a religious conference. Actually, it was a full gospel businessmen's conference. I was invited as a Catholic priest. Most of these people were non-denominational Protestant people. And as a Catholic priest that they've heard before, they wanted to hear from me. There was 900 people at this convention center and I was shaking hands and everybody was in my, I ended up getting the COVID disease, the pandemic. And it was terrible. I got sick, got a sore throat, was in bed, had to take Paxlovid. It was a tough situation. But I trusted God. The bottom line is, is I was supposed to go on a mission to Michigan the week after that conference. I couldn't go. I had to cancel the mission. And I didn't understand why, but I trusted God. In good times and in hard times. Trust God at all times, O oh people. This is what the scriptures do. They give us ideas. You have to fill in the blanks. You have to connect it with your own experiences. That's inspiration. Meditatio. Spend a little bit of time just thinking about it. Lean on God with your whole heart. Trust God with your marriage. Rely on God with your finances. Be confident in God for your future. That's trusting God. That's what this series is all about. This is what the scriptures are inviting us to. 
and pour out your heart before God, who is our refuge. And then, first of all, there's lectio, you read, meditatio, spend a few moments thinking about what you just read, focusing on it. What would I say to people at my homily? Then there's something called oratio. Oratio simply means prayer. We just heard it, pour out your hearts to God, O people. You surrender to God in prayer. You just simply talk from, be honest, be rigorously honest about what's going on. Say something like, I want to hear from you. I don't understand this. I'm going through this suffering. Don't give God a bunch of gobbledygook, (laughs) religious terminology. Remember what Jesus said? Don't babble on like the pagans. God knows what you need even before you ask him. Speak from your heart. Pour out your heart to God, O people. Tell God honestly what you're feeling. Even if you're angry at God, tell him God can handle it. Might be a good time for you to surrender to God in prayer. What I do in the morning when I do my devotions, after I read a little bit of scripture and think about it for a few moments, I stand up and I talk to God about what I've just read and about what I'm going through and about the day. I try not to say the same things over and over and over again every day. If you think your prayer life's boring, imagine God when he has to hear the same thing from you all the time. Try to say different things. Strive for variety. That's oratio. And God hears your prayer. He listens to you. And then finally, the last step is something called contemplatio. Contemplatio, contemplation. Yeah, it's the study it's meditation, it's praying, and then it's acting on the Word. The Bible is not just a book to be read, it's a book to act on. And if you don't act on it, not a whole lot of things are going to happen. Really important. The Bible encourages us, inspires us, comforts us, and challenges us. I liken it to like a diet book. You can read diet books all you want. Got to lose some weight. This is the novel thing. This is the in vogue book. Reading it, it's not going to do a thing unless you do what it says. (laughs) Same thing with the scriptures. Jesus said, blessed are those who hear the word of God and do it. Act on it. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons why people don't come to the scriptures is because They're afraid of what it might ask of them. And yes, it will call you to repentance. (laughs) That was one of the early things that happened in my life, repentance, and it continues throughout my life. We need to turn our moral life and our hearts over to God. It will call it, because it's the truth, it will call us to repentance. It will call us to read more and to pray more, to get deeper with God. It will invite us to live a significant life, not just a surface life, to be fruitful. The Bible will call us. God will call us through the scriptures to more. And that's okay. Don't be afraid of that. The scriptures want to make us magnificent and fruitful and significant in our life. Trust God at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts before him. For God is a refuge for us. I put on the front of my Bible a cover, and it's a Bible cover with a butterfly. Butterfly is a symbol of transformation. And as I think about my life over the years, the many years I've lived since I was an 18-year-old young man coming to the scriptures, the Bible has brought transformation in me. I am not the same person that I used to be by far. And it's because of reading, meditating, listening, and trying the best I can to do what the scriptures are asking. When I was finally ordained a deacon, and that's right before you're ordained a priest for about six months, then you are ordained to preach as a deacon. The Bible was handed to me by the bishop at the ordination. He gave it to me, and this happens at every ordination. 
And he says this, he said, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you preach. And that's great advice for all of us. Simply read the scriptures, spend a little time thinking about it, pour out your heart before God, and do what it says. Trust and you will be blessed. Don't just live, live with passion. I love reaching out to people of all ages, especially to young people. Got a letter from a young man. Father Cedric, I'm an 11-year-old who listens to your TV programs with my father. I go to a Christian school, but you really help me to learn about Jesus. Keep going and proclaim the gospel to all people. That really touches my heart because I want to reach out to young people and help them to come to know Jesus. And one of the ways that we can do that is by coming to the scriptures. And I just told you about that. I have this picture Bible that many people have gotten because of their donations, because they've become partners with my ministry. I want to interest you in that. I will send that Bible to you for any donation. And also, if you become a partner with my ministry, I really appreciate that. Then I wanted to tell you about my book, The Sacred Quest. This book is about prayer. When you come to God in prayer, you're trusting that God is there for you. And I want to help you to pray well. I want to help you in your relationship with God. This book is called The Sacred Quest. Many people have bought it and you can purchase it also. Just simply go to my website, fathercedric.org. You can write me in Houston, Texas, 77024 or simply call that number, 844-FATHER-C. We'll get that book out to you. It's only $15 plus shipping and handling. Really want to thank you for purchasing my resources, the DVD and the CD of this series about trusting God, my books, and thank you in advance for your donations and partnership. Really, really appreciate it. Trust God, O oh people, at all times. Don't just live, live with passion. God is reliable and trustworthy. Through Father Cedric's resources, you will learn to trust God more fully and experience abundant life. Right now, simply call, write, or go online and order Series 925 DVD or CD, as well as the book Father talked about. Because of these programs, people everywhere are deepening their faith. Every purchase supports Father Cedric in his God-given mission to touch lives and save souls. Father Cedric is a Catholic priest with a professed vow of poverty. Be assured that the money from your purchases and donations will be used to produce and air Live With Passion. Right now, simply call 844-FATHER-C. That's 844-328-4372. A kind operator is waiting for your call. Or write Father Cedric at 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024, or log on to frcedric.org and order online. Simple, easy, and secure. Whatever you're going through, lean on the everlasting arms.